Hey collectors, welcome to Star Wars Collected. I'm Jonathan. If you're new here, I hope you consider sticking around and subscribing. But if you've been here before, I hope you have a better aim on that like button than your normal Stormtrooper does. Because what I have for you guys today is the gentle giant Stormtrooper statue from A New Hope. We're gonna open it up, take a look at it. And of course, I got a great deal on it. I wouldn't necessarily say I'm known as like the budget collector or something like that, but I feel like I have a lot of really good luck. So I have a rule that I did break recently, but I have a rule that I never buy Gentle Giant stuff straight from Gentle Giant because I find that their pieces lose value very quickly. I'm not really sure why. I think that they make some very nice products. I think even their current MSRP on most of their products is pretty fair. Um, you know, you kind of have like Iron Studios sort of in a smaller scale for some of the stuff uh, at one end, um, you know, maybe a little bit cheaper than what Gentle Giant is offering. Um, but then kind of at the other end, then you have like Sideshow Premium Format statues that are quarter scale. Um, but those have gotten so, so, so expensive um, that Gentle Giant is kind of a nice in-between. Now Gentle Giant has a bunch of different lines. They make busts, that they make milestone statues, they make, um, I think it's called Premier statues. So they're kind of all over the place and the different scales that they make. So you have to be kind of a little cognizant of what you're purchasing if you're trying to purchase all in the same scale. But what I find is just that their value just doesn't hold, which is kind of unfortunate for them and for people who buy directly from Gentle Giant, but is wonderful for myself who has no problem buying something on the secondary market. This guy had an MSRP of $250 and I paid less than half of that and I feel so far good with that choice. We'll take a look here and see if it works out or not. Decent sized box here. The milestone pieces are one six scale pieces, which is kind of the minimum scale that I like to collect. I like my stuff, you know, as big as I can get them, but you know, I love quarter scale things and stuff like that. And of course I love one-to-one -one props and things of that nature. That's kind of really what I'm known for. I have uh, over a hundred helmets in that one-to-one -one scale, but I like statues too. Statues are cool. So I had been watching quite a few of these on eBay and I saw quite a few around like $200 or something like that, but that just wasn't quite sweet enough for me. So like I said, MSRP, $250 plus shipping directly from Gentle Giant. This one I got for less than half off and free shipping. Interesting enough, this one is six, number six out of 1,000. So that's a pretty low number. It doesn't really mean anything. It's basically meaningless, but kind of a novelty of it, which is kind of cool. All the Gentle Giant stuff comes with these little cards, a certificate of authenticity, got a little graphic on the front, and then on the back, they have the numbering on there. To the best of my knowledge, it's always done by hand. So someone there at uh, Gentle Giant, they just, get to write numbers all day it would seem. And the box here has got some statue art on it showing you from all different angles. Of course, this is actually not included in the background, which is really cool, but we've got art on all sides. Much like some of our other manufacturers out there, especially Hot Toys and Hasbro, you can buy basically this exact same statue, but with Han Solo's head on it for the same price. The one nice thing about that one is that that comes with Han Solo's head as well as the TK helmet. So since they kind of go for the same price, I looked at them quickly on online to me it looked like they were the exact same pose so it kind of begs the question that if you were going to go and you were going to buy directly from gentle giant and both of those are available why buy this one over buying the harrison ford one and then at least then you have the option to decide whether you want it to be harrison ford in stormtrooper armor or you want it to be a new hope tk trooper and you get to make that choice so not something that i was particularly caring about when I bought this because I wanted a Stormtrooper, but the Han Solo one is pretty cool. Now, they also make a Luke version, uh, but the Luke version is actually like a different sculpt. Uh, it might share some common pieces here and there, but the way it was posed is actually a different piece. So we've got quite a few pieces here. Now, I've been unboxing a lot of Gentle Giant stuff recently. We've had Purge Trooper. We've had uh, Luke from Return of the Jedi. We've had Leia from A New Hope. And a lot of those kind of come as one piece or very, very few pieces that you're putting together. Maybe you add the lightsaber or something like that. But this is a little bit more kind of like a premium format statue in that we have a lot of different little pieces, which honestly kind of makes it a little bit more fun to put together with you guys than just sort of popping out of the box and saying, there it is, here's what I think. Like I was saying earlier, I think that Gentle Giant does a really good job at kind of giving you a good value. I think it's a great place to either start a collection or honestly stay a collection. And they do a lot of different characters. You'll find 
find things that they're doing there that you're not gonna find from Hot Toys or Sideshow. So that's kind of a nice place to be able to kind of fill in some gaps here and there in your collection. I always think of representation in my collection. Is this character represented as I'd like to see them in my collection? So there are some characters out there here and there that you know you just don't have a piece for. And maybe the Gentle Giant group has a piece that'll fill in nicely for you. One thing that they're particularly kind of famous for are making busts. And I have zero interest in the bust. And it always kind of breaks my heart when they come out and they're like, it's one six scale, it looks like this. And it's kind of a cropped image. And then you find out that, you know, it's a bust or you find out later that it's a bust. Uh, and for me, a bust is a bust. I just um, don't have that much interest. I want to see the full shebang of it all. It looks like we have some options, actually, as I put this together. We have uh, far too many arms. <laughs> we have uh, twice as many arms as what we need. So maybe we'll build it one way and then we'll take it apart and build it another way. So this is technically a used piece. It was in someone else's collection. So you always want to make sure when you're opening these things that you do a little extra inspection. Um, you know, sometimes it's disclosed if there's an issue. Sometimes it's not. Sometimes it gets hurt in transit. So you always want to give it a once over. But that's honestly true even if you're buying something directly from a manufacturer. Manufacturers do a really good job and spend a lot of time and I would assume a lot of money putting in the R&D into making sure that these things are a well-packaged product and that they arrive to customers in a way that is going to make them happy. But you never know what can happen in transit. Let's build it a couple different ways. Obviously, we're going to have the head on it no matter what. And this does one of my favorite things that a lot of statue manufacturers do, which is simply that they use magnets in the bottom here. It just gives you that little extra assurance that it's not going to go anywhere. I'm looking at the top here, and this is, uh, this is interesting. This isn't something that I remember seeing before, and I, I could be telling you guys wrong, so we're gonna find out here in a moment. But see how the top of that is very textured. It's almost like the inside of a wrench or something like that. I'm guessing that what that is, is meaning that I can take this head and maybe put it on a couple different ways. So we've got it on there now, and it's kind of looking off to the left. And if I'm right, my guess is that I can take that off and adjust that slightly, and I can choose a couple different positions on the sculpt, which is pretty cool. That is not something that I've seen before, but I like that. That kind of adds that little extra customizability to it. What should we do first? Let's do the one with the rifle. When he has his rifle, it has two hands built into the actual gun itself. That's a pretty smart way of doing it. Trying to snap hands onto rifles and guns and stuff like that can be a real pain. And if he has his rifle out, that means he's gonna have his E11 here in his holster. So we're gonna go ahead and put this one on here. We also have a blank holster, which looks like leather. Uh, it has little stitches on the side, has a little bit of grain, very well contoured and things like that, but is not leather, which is pretty cool. They've done a good job with that. I'm gonna have to figure out exactly which arm goes where. I mean, this is gonna be our right arm because we have another right arm here with the E11 blaster in it. So you can see down the side here, we've got a nice big cavern and the arm itself has the undersuit built into it. We've got the cap on there, all that stuff. And when we snap that in, it is basically just seamless. It looks like a statue. It looks like it's all one piece, which is kind of the goal. So then we have two arms here. One is going out a little bit further. One is a little bit closer. So we're gonna take this arm, put that in there, and you can see that there's a little bit more distance between the two, and that's gonna match up well with these hands. Now it might be something where we have to kind of unplug or replug, or it just snaps right in because it's just that cool. And we can decide which orientation we want to put his head at. We're going to go kind of off to the one side here as if he's kind of looking more towards the end of his gun. He's seen something off to the left here and he's getting ready to, to raise his rifle. He's looking pretty good. Could be shinier. You know, when I think of a stormtrooper, it is a very shiny ABS. This does look kind of white painted, which honestly is closer to kind of how at least the New Hope ones were. Shiny overall, but could be shinier, I think. One thing that Gentle Giant, I find, often has an issue with is more skin tones and things of that. Just the diversity of color that exists in skin. You know, there's a lot to that. On a trooper, I think they really excel there because there isn't quite that. So they, got the, they have to contend with the sculpt and then of course the paint has to be accurate. But I think overall troopers are especially good from Gentle Giant. There he is with his big rifle. Let's go ahead and swap this out. Again, magnets on the hands, magnets on the arms. It makes all this really, really easy. We're gonna take this holster off the side here too. Now let's go with the classic E11 blaster. That is what I think of when I think of a stormtrooper. Put that arm in there. And this one again is actually all in arm, the E11 and his left hand, all in one piece, which is pretty cool. 
we'll slide that in there and we'll play around this, this just a little bit to get it all kind of in together. And there we go. And this, I think that the head looking that direction is even more perfectly spot on when you think of a trooper. There's like a little bit of roughness here on the side here where the paint could be a little bit better or maybe the sculpt underneath. But then they surprise me. This They surprise me on loop too. They have this perfect little wrinkled seam. Kind of looks like where a zipper would be. Don't tell George. But it is a lot of really unnecessary detail that they went ahead and put in there. But then they kind of disappoint you a little bit when you go out here and there is sort of like a little speck of paint or something like that. Or down here, this is actually off the mold that's actually probably the most egregious error that I've seen right there is there's just like this little peg sticking out for no reason. You also have some issues here with the smoothing on the side. So final thoughts on this statue. I think overall it's pretty good. I feel comfortable with what I paid for it. I would have maybe been a little disappointed though if I had paid the MSRP. The more I've looked at it, the more I'm finding little things here and there where just the paint isn't quite up to snuff. But every collection needs a Stormtrooper or several in it. And I think this will look really good. With all my other statues, especially ones from A New Hope, it'll be a good accompaniment piece. Guys, hop down in the comments and let me know what do you think of Gentle Giant? What do you think of this statue in particular? Collectors, make sure you're following me on Instagram. It's a place where we can kind of connect a little bit more directly. And if you haven't subscribed already, make sure you do that as well. Something like that helps the little channel like mine a lot. Uh, there's tons of new content coming. Uh, all this stuff behind me are boxes of cool stuff that need to be unboxed and shown to you guys. We have some uh, MYC back there. We have some, uh, we've got a lot of helmets back here. We have some uh, hot toys stuff. We actually have a lot of hot toys stuff back there. I have a ton of lightsabers that I need to figure out how I'm going to show it to you guys, uh, but I'm excited to bring that all to you. So make sure you're subscribed and following along. And guys, I will see you on the next one.